Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Matt. This is Bask in the Story, and today we're doing our November wrap up. And November for me has been a fabulous reading month. It may even be the best reading month of the year, which is surprising because it's been a very good reading year. But there are some corking reads, corking reads, I'm going to say, uh, some absolutely fantastic reads, five star reads, three, four of them. We'll go through them and, and double check that, but nine books in total. We're going to start with non-fiction. It was non-fiction November, so that seems the best place to start. And that made up a good proportion of my books that I finished. So I read four non-fiction books for non-fiction November to hit the four prompts that Olive, from the book Olive, had set out. So I hit one book for each prompt. So we'll go through them in turn. The first prompt was Fraud. And for Fraud, I read Coltish. And this is about... The language used in cults and how language language can influence people and it is about language it's also you know more broadly about cults in general and i enjoyed the parts about the language she had some very interesting thoughts and on it so we talked about um thought stopping cliches so little phrases that get they put in to basically stop the conversation stop the 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 thought or the challenge that's coming to them and just shut off any arguments which is which is quite interesting and once you start to see them you can start to hear them in in all forms of life actually so that was that was quite an insight that i appreciated the other part was also about the exclusivity of language and the the way that language is used for groups to give that group identity and an us and them uh feeling in that and that's not what we necessarily traditionally view as cults, but throughout very, very groups. And she also talks about cults in a broader sense, not just maybe like the religious view of it, of that sort of cultish group, but more broadly. So MLMs and how they bring people into their sphere, you know, CrossFit and that sort of cultural us and them, and this way is the only way, and that, that language of exclusivity is used very effectively in uh, things like CrossFit where you have all these terms and phrases and that gives it, it gives that level of exclusivity that you remember of, of a specific club and you're, you're special and unique and you have belonging, you belong there. So that was that was good. It was good. It wasn't my favourite book, it was, it was, but it was good and it had some very interesting insights. So if you're sort of interested in cults and uh, cultish things and language, this is, this is worth checking out. The second prompt was Web. And for this, I read The Excellent Entangled Life by Melvin Sheldrake. This was superb. This was fascinating. His enthusiasm for fungi comes through just so vividly in this book. And it's just a fascinating subject. There's so much we don't know. And there's, what we do know is absolutely mind-blowing. And I did, a, I did a joint review of this and another book I'm going to talk about shortly because I loved them both so much. Uh, which I will link. So go go check them out if you want more thoughts on this. It, absolutely superb. If you've got any interest in sort of nature, um, our place in nature, the way the, the world and life works, the interconnectedness of life, read this book. It is, it is superb. I'm not going to say any more, but if you want to know more, go check my previous video. The third prompt was Capital. And for this, I read uh, The Ascent of Money. And this was probably the most disappointing non-fiction read I had. No, not probably. This was the most non uh, disappointing non-fiction read I had of the month. It's about the history of money, but it's very Western focused. It's very European and uh, US centric. It's very, mm, it had a very heavy weighting towards quite recent history. And I was, maybe I was expecting or hoping for something that was a bit more broader in scope of the history of money and the, especially the past moment of how money was created and how it developed. Um, there were some interesting insights of, of the connection between the requirement of finance for wars and how that has driven innovation at several points. But for me, it just felt very, very closed on, on the view it was taking of where the innovation in money came from and has developed. And... So yeah, it didn't have the broad appeal that I was hoping for. Let's put it that way. Uh, also, it, it wasn't as engaging as the other reads. And it may be that I was just, it was just pitched against two exceptional ones and one good 
non-fiction read that are all very engaging. It had some interesting anecdotes in this, but nothing that really grabbed me and moved me along in this, this history of money. So that was, that was a little disappointing. But the fourth one, the fourth one, let's finish on a high for non-fiction November, was for display. So that was the, the prompt. And I read Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez, which is about the data gap around women in society and all walks of life. And she covers a whole range of subjects around life. So it could be car design, public transport, routes, uh, toilets, disaster relief, design of tools and technology. There, there's just, she, and so many more. And she talks about where we have a data gap because we see the average human as an average man in a lot of data sets and what that actually means. And this is superb. Everyone should read this in my opinion. It is absolutely magnificent. She writes incredibly passionately on the subject. It's eye-opening. It really drew me in and made me think about things I've taken for granted or assumptions I've made. And it just makes you see the world a bit differently. And that's the beauty of a great non-fiction book is when you leave it feeling that actually not only have you learned something, but you see things differently. Absolutely brilliant. Again, this is the one I linked with, uh, did a dual review with that and Entangled Life. Um, it'll be linked down below. You know, go check out if you want to know more on this, but I highly, highly recommend Invisible Women to anybody and everybody. And I probably have been talking, talking about it too much. But they were the four non-fiction reads uh, I had for November. And I thoroughly enjoyed uh, my non-fiction November reading and I'm looking forward to next year and I, I will continue to read non-fiction throughout the year but this was it was nice to get a nice bulk of non-fiction and maybe some books that I wouldn't necessarily have picked up straight away and I do enjoy the prompts just uh, like trying to fit books to those those four prompts is quite a quite a fun challenge so let's move on to the fiction so we've got five fiction books I think we're going to start with we'll start with a new release so I read uh, The Future by Naomi Alderman uh, this was sort of a reasonably highly anticipated book for me. It came after reading The Power, uh, which won the Women's Prize Fiction a few years ago, but I read it earlier this year and I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. It wasn't like one of my reads of the year, but it was good. So I was, I was interested to see what she did with the future. And this is about a small group of billionaires who are, their companies basically run the world. You can see a lot of parallels with today and they are setting up for the end of the world because they know it's coming. They don't really care because they've got their bunkers and they're going to be sorted and they'll be all right because they've, they've basically ravaged the land to make lots of money. And so we've got that. We've got the end of the world coming, but no one's quite sure when, but it's, is it here and when is it? Uh, you've got a, a little bit of a heist going on. You've got a, a love story which at the beginning was certainly more of a lust story, but isn't that how lots of love relationships begin anyway that's a side note so there's a lot in it i was quite excited to read it unfortunately i just found there's one huge flaw to it that really damaged my enjoyment of the book and i did do a, a review a dedicated review for this book but effectively it was the way it was structured the way the story was structured we had lots of time jumps backwards and forwards so each chapter especially at the beginning, each chapter you were jumping around in time. And I just felt I kept being pulled out of the story, trying to figure out when on earth was this happening? You know, was it before last chapter, after last chapter, a long time after, a long time before? Where does all the... And I just... And I think I understand where they did it. They sort of did it to... It hides the reveals later on. And, you know, you get that, you know, a bit of a surprise later on because it's hidden within the time, time jumps. But it just destroyed my enjoyment and my engagement in the story because every time I kept stepping out and going oh when are we now and the chapters were short and each chapter was a different jumping around in time so I just never really settled into the story which is disappointing so that wasn't a great start uh, to the I think that was the first book I finished this month as well so it wasn't a great start to the, my reading month so sci-fi let's continue with the the sci-fi and we've got classics so I continue my classic reading I read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley this is brilliant I, I thoroughly enjoyed this the writing in it was exceptional it's so detailed it's so beautiful it's so vivid and yes it is it is i suppose harder going than a lot of the more easy reading engaging reading um that you may get in more sort of specifically more sun uh, modern sci-fi but it was just magnificent it may be one of the, the most well-written books I've ever read and the story is is superb to go alongside it so 
you know, you've got fabulous prose, you've got a wonderful story that has inspired so much of um, the sci-fi horror genre. It, it was just magnificent. I, th I thoroughly enjoyed it. And my, I did recently put out the, the next lot of classics that I want to read next year because I started reading classics this year and it's been an absolute pleasure uh, getting into some some of the most well-known classics that I haven't read before and yeah they've been some of my favorite reads of the year so far and this was this was up there this was definitely up there so absolutely superb so that was that picked it up so what do I go to next if we're talking about oh, so moving on from horror I actually read so I did have Frankenstein so I don't know why I didn't show you Frankenstein there we go I actually finished uh, Pet Cemetery by Stephen King and I'm not going to talk too much about it because there's a, a, a reading vlog going to come out probably next week if I get down to editing properly and get this one out but certainly shortly there'll be a reading vlog coming out I have thoughts I have emotions uh, related to this this storytelling it's it's a, so his writing in comparison to Mary Shelley's um, beautiful detailed fascinating prose this is much simpler prose, but it's set in the time and it works for the time and the space. And that's, that's, that's the beauty about prose. It's about putting you in a place and a time. And this is putting me back 200 years into sort of the elite literary, um, not literary, the elite um, educated society. Uh, and this is not. Uh, and, you know, different proses work for different things. So, anyway, and aside, this was really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm going to talk more about it in my vlog as I read through it. I want to read more Stephen King. It's weird, like, it wasn't scary in the way I thought it might be scary. And I've been thinking about how to explain this, but it was, it did delve into one of my greatest fears and his dealing of, you know, exploration of loss and grief, which is a subject which I found disturbing yet fascinating, uh, was, was emotional and it, is a bit of a challenging read, but as I said, I'll talk about more about the vlog, which will be out. I'm going to commit to next week. It'll be out next week. Come on. Come on, future editing, Matt. Sort it out. So that's that. So I've got two from a series, two series books. So one, I finished a series. So let's start with that one, shall we? I finished a series. So I finished uh, Stig Larsson's uh, Millennium series. So this was The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, the third in the trilogy that was written by him. Now, this was brilliant. And what's interesting is this is, so Stig Larsson, obviously, so I don't know, where, some of you will know this, but originally he set out to write 10 books in this this series. This was going to be an immense 10 book episode, but he died quite prematurely and he'd only written the three. And they were all, I think they were, all three of them were um, published uh, after his death. So we've only got the three, but this works so well as a trilogy. It, it's the character arcs that the, the this is such a satisfying conclusion to the story and it's oh it's just magnificent it this is this is to me this is there's, there's parts in here which are like just like fist pumpingly satisfying just brilliant I, I i can't like it still has it still has to glasson's quirks of the level of detail that he gives at some points it seems unnecessary um and i think i, I mentioned it in my wrap-up for the second book where one of the characters goes to Ikea and is fitting out their, their flat and we get sort of a lot of detail about the furniture they're putting in their, in their flat, which was unnecessary to the story. Now, it's, it gives you a place and a sense of place and who they are and, uh, and their tastes, but it, it, there's a lot of details that's unnecessary. And there's, there's little details he continues to throw in, which always just, they just feel a bit excessive, a little bit excessive. And we still get that in here, but if you enjoyed the first two, this picks up right at the end of the second one. So it, the, the second one and this one just are one continuation of the story. There is no gap between uh, the end of the, the second one and the beginning of this one. And it is, this, this is how trilogies should conclude. It, it just ties up wonderfully. As I say, if you think this is was originally planned as a third of ten, I'd be really curious to see what the next lot would have been if he had survived, and I know there's another writer who's sort of picked it up and is writing it, but I don't know whether I'll continue with them or not. But this is this was magnificent. I'm not going to tell you too much about the storyline because if you haven't read the others, then there's a lot of things in here that will spoil the others. But if you have started the Millennium series, maybe you've just read the first one and you thought it was okay, the second and third one build and get better, in my opinion, and, and this third one 
was was the best of the series by far. So the other series I have been reading and that I have uh, not quite finished yet, but I finished the third one of the four. So this is the, the Ruin, which is the third book in The Faithful and Fallen by John Gwynn. This is multi-POV, epic fantasy on a grand scale, and it's doubly engaging, thoroughly enjoying it. I'm, I love the car character arcs, I'm loving the storylines. Um, this one didn't have the same emotional kick as the second one. It still had an emotional kick, enough, but there was some good reveals in this one which sort of pushed out on some of the uh, tropes that have been we've been following through so we had a bit of bit of pushback a bit of turning around of the of tropes etc which was it was nice to see and engage me and gets me excited for the, the fourth one which uh, is downstairs at the moment which is uh wrath or wrath and i am hoping to finish that by the end of the year and hopefully to finish the series by the end of the year because in January, I am going to be reading, uh, starting The Wheel of Time. I'm looking over there because I can see it on the shelf over there. Uh, Wheel of Time, so The Eye of the World on January. I'd like to start January 1st, but I'd like to get some of the this sort of epic fantasy series finished so I can focus on that. I don't want to have too many fantasy series all going at once because that might get a bit confusing. But we'll see. So, yes, so the inside of January, I'm reading that with Sam Harrison from the channel Sam Harrison as well. So... That is that I feel like I'm missing one. Hang on a second. I feel like I've have I have I done them all? That's five, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five, that's it. That is it. That's the nine books. I'm not missing one. So as I say, a fabulous reading month. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm gonna do book of the month and as I say, it's a good few five star reads. So five star reads Stig Larson's and two Frankenstein, Invisible Women and uh, Entangled Life uh, probably five. I think I'm going to actually give it to one that I don't actually have here which is Invisible Women I think that gets my five star uh, book of the month award this month I think in next year what I might do is I might pick two my two favourite books every month and then like have a at the end of the year have a sort of a, a battle off so just put them all in segments you know versus who and then put down so we've got 24 12 6 3 and I'll give them my top 3 then and I can rank the top 3 books of the year something like that rather than just doing one a month pick two because you have a month like this and I could certainly pick two possibly possibly even three but if I pick two from every month and then we can have a little rounds to knock them down to the, a final three so I might do that for next year something different anyway I'm pondering and meandering and going off on tangents now so I think it's time to draw back to a close let me know how your November reading went did you do non-fiction November if so what did you read did you read any of these four or did you read something else let me know if you've got any recommendations, I'm always looking for great non-fiction reads uh, as well as fiction reads as well. Uh, we've got some more videos coming out shortly. So I've got my vlog to do. Uh, I've done a couple on plans for next year and I've got some more plans for next year. I may have been overly ambitious in my plans for 2024, but why not? Reading is a, a great delight. So why not make the most of it? And I will see you in the next one. Bye.